times we will stress about things that already happened that we cannot control or we'll stress about things that have not happened yet and create these like hypothetical scenarios and cause suffering on ourselves that was never going to happen to begin with. And that's a whole lot of suffering for my overthinkers and my people who have anxiety and whatever you may have. That's a lot of suffering. To constantly put your body through that state of stress and suffering is really not good. And it's time for you to be mindful of the fact that you are that type of person and you do constantly overthink and you do um, put yourself through suffering and stress. Be one, be mindful of that first, but also live in the moment. Like when you have those intrusive thoughts and those negative thoughts come up, you can do one or two things or you can do both. You can replace that negative thought with a positive one. So you say to yourself, let's say that you're thinking about your ex, okay? Let's say you're thinking about your ex and how this person hurt you and he damaged you or she crushed your soul and oh my God, and I'm never going to find love and you just, oh, no, 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 you know, you're crying and it's, <laughs> it's like a whole thing. So in that moment, allow the negative thought to pass. Don't try to like shove it away or suppress it because it's there it's coming up for a reason you just don't want to dwell in it allow the negative thought to pass through and then immediately replace it with a positive thought i appreciate that person who hurt me because i learned a very valuable lesson from that experience and i love myself even more than i did when i was with that person and i am now attracting somebody who is aligned with me okay that's how you replace a negative thought when they come up, all right? Also, when you have those negative thoughts and you're letting them pass, and maybe you need to cry or whatever you need to do, just stop. Just take a second, take a couple deep breaths, like a big one, like three really big deep breaths. When you inhale, make sure you're holding it for like at least five seconds and exhaling it for like seven, ten seconds and just like releasing it. And feel your energy grounding wherever you are and just be present in this moment and look around your room or look around your office or look around wherever you are in that moment and point out everything that you're grateful for. I'm grateful for my bed. I say that all the time. Like, <laughs> I love my bed. Like, as a Taurus, you already know, we love comfort. We love relaxation. I love my bed. I'm always expressing gratitude for my bed. And you know why? There are people in this world who do not have beds. I love my bed, all right? So look around your space. I'm grateful for my bed. I'm grateful for my legs. I'm grateful that I get to, I can walk to the kitchen on my legs and on my feet and go get something to drink. I'm grateful for my hands. Like I'm grateful that I'm able to hug my child and I actually have arms to do that. You get my point. Those are things that you need to start implementing and it's going to really help you with your anxiety over time and your overthinking and your truths of thoughts. I'm not a medical doctor um, and I can't just come on here and say it's going to completely go away. But what I can say is when those thoughts come up and those feelings come up, your perception of them is going to be completely different. You're not going to look at them the same way you did before. You are going to actually think it's funny. <laughs> You're going to begin to laugh at them. You're going to begin to realize that how silly that you were being. You're going to begin to understand yourself better and where those thoughts actually came from. Whether it was your parents' voice that's saying these negative things to you or whoever raised you, whoever your guardian was. Or it stems from childhood. It stems from something. Those negative beliefs that we have about ourselves stem from something. That's where your shadow work comes into play. I have a blog post on shadow work. The link is in my description box. Just click my blog and you'll see, you'll scroll and you'll find the one about shadow work. That's where that comes into play because you need to figure out what those negative, where those negative beliefs come from in order to heal from them, okay? Because a lot of y'all don't understand why you are the way you are. But you never tried to understand why you are the way you are. You just walked around and just accepted this version of yourself, not realizing that you have the power to be who you want to be. <laughs> Y'all remember that game? Be who you want to be. 
Barbie girl. Okay. <laughs> you have the power to be who you want to be um, and create your own reality. And you don't have to hold on to this trauma and this negativity. You do have the power to transmute it. It does not define you. It does not have to be a part of like your everyday life anymore. You can get rid of it, but it's your choice. You have to choose to. And a lot of people keep asking me how. I'm telling you how. <laughs> you have to pay attention to yourself. You have to study yourself. When those negative thoughts come up, write it down. What does this mean? Do I believe this about myself? Where did this negative thought come from? When did I start feeling like this about myself? You got to study yourself. You have to like pay attention to you and be honest and raw and vulnerable with yourself in order to heal that part of you. That's the first step. A lot of times we just lack discipline. We lack confidence. It's not that you don't know how. It's just that you are not willing to begin. You have to be willing to begin. Just start somewhere okay what little things about yourself that you need to fix and it's not that you're going to be constantly healing you're constantly transforming you're constantly fixing yourself <laughs> i'm not even saying there's anything necessarily wrong with you it's just for those of us who struggle with mental health or we've been through a certain our trauma was more severe we do got to put in a little bit of work but the reward from that is and increasing your personal power and like you stepping into your destined path. Um, there are going to be times where you're just going to rest. There are going to be times where you just want to do nothing or you just want to cry or you're going to be extremely happy and life is going to feel really good. Like you're going to go through those moments. You don't have to constantly be doing this all the time, but you need to be implementing it at some point. Okay. If you can acknowledge what is wrong with you then you are able to fix it. Do your shadow work. Study yourself so you can get back to the point where you're actually enjoying life and life is not flying by and you're spending all your time being anxious or unhappy or you're overthinking and you're not living in the present moment. You have to learn how to live in the present moment. And at the very least that you can do, super easy thing that you can do which is what I was telling y'all before those three things grounding your energy um, and expressing gratitude saying your positive affirmations and transmuting negative thoughts and experiences like those are things that you can do um I feel like I explained how to do it a million times so I'm not going to say it again but that's something that you can do that will help you and help your mental health so you'll get to the point where you're ready to do your shadow work and work on yourself but that's what you're gonna have to do and if you do it the reward will be life it'll be freedom it'll be the journey it won't be it won't feel like you're just dragging along and just living the same day over and over again it'll completely change your perception but it's going to take time and it's going to take you taking that first step <music>